Welcome back to Chance Encounters, everybody, to our second episode of First City, our original campaign about superhero college. Da -da -da. Da -da -da. I am, as always, Ian Frost, here with Karina, Natasha, and Eric, my very bestest friends who are going on this crazy journey with me and with all of you. Um, if you haven't watched the first episode, be sure to go check that out, because this is probably not going to make a lot of sense. And by a lot of sense, I mean probably any sense. Um, so without further ado, I think we'll just go into a little bit of recap uh, of last episode. Let's do it. All right. Yep, yep. So our story began at the Moonlight Academy, a university of sorts for up and coming superheroes, where you guys are three students from very different backgrounds who all were just informed that you were chosen for the champion program, where you would be assigned to a hero squad with a few other students and uh, you are on your way to a grand assembly with Nova, also known as the Nexus of Valiance, the huge, big, famous superhero group that are like the sought-after instructors of this, uh, this program. There are also um, several other heroes who are also squad leaders as well. And you arrive with this big group of other students who had been chosen with powers and backgrounds ranging all over the place and you arrive expecting whatever it is you're expecting. I know some of you had specific hopes for whose team you wanted to be on and as the ceremony progressed with Fortress, your headmistress, the, bless you, uh, most famous superhero in the world, arguably. And um, mom. <laughs> she, she began to call forward the heroes one at a time and you began to get nervous as she continued down the line and down the line and your names were never called. It seemed for a moment as though she was not going to say your names, which wouldn't have made any sense because you knew that you'd been chosen already or else you wouldn't be here. Until finally a woman arrived late, not wearing a superhero costume like everyone else, but rather just wearing like yoga pants and a hoodie. A woman who looked maybe only in her thirties, if that, uh, with a tattoo on the back of her neck of five dots in a circle with a sixth in the center. And as she stepped down to the stage, embracing Fortress like an old friend, uh, a couple of your friends who were assigned to a different team told you, you know, don't you know who that is? That is Pantheon. She is a famous hero who trained Fortress, who has not been seen or heard from who may even have been presumed dead for the last 25 years. As you were assigned to this squad, there was a lot of bated breath and gasps and you met on the quad afterward after some, some brief sort of heated encounters with, with another student on BB's end. Uh, you find Pantheon to be a very, shall we say, casual uh, approach. To teaching that she has as she led you to the cafeteria uh, or rather to the to the food court to have a little lesson in uh, something or other after this encounter the student known as Teatro approached you guys outside and informed you that he had a theory about the strangeness of the events surrounding your team and surrounding Dr. Guest, this mysterious figure. He says, Dr. Guest always seems to be around when disaster strikes. Just something to oh, think yeah. about, as he just sort of sunk into the shadows. Rut row. <laughs> Rut row is right. <laughs> we find you guys now, the next day after this, knowing that the previous day, when uh, <laughs> on your very, very um, eventful first day, Pantheon had told you to meet today at 10 a.m. at 12th Street. As you all make your way there through the campus, you find 12th Street to be a place that is in the uh, West Training City. It is essentially, uh, there is a, a function of this campus, a part of this campus, many parts of this campus actually, that are essentially simulated cities. They are small scale, varying from small towns to big bustling metropolises that are built with these hidden panels, training dummies, all sorts of things that are built into this campus to simulate a city environment that you might 
do hero work in someday. Um, that's one of the most sought after kind of innovative things about the Champions Programs campus is that you have access to these, these areas. So as you make your way to 12th Street, you find the, uh, the West City grounds to be particularly uh, sort of simulating a financial district, these big towering square skyscrapers, the occasional sort of monorail tracks going through the highest levels of the buildings, uh, you see like, you know, certain like park benches, there are buses that move through kind of automatically that have, uh, occasionally they'll have no drivers, sometimes they'll have like an automated sort of dummy driver. Um, I am, I always ask this question, you guys get to places and it's always the same answer that generally BB gets there first. Yeah. Okay. BB's always on time. I mean, BB's always early. Okay. So, BB, you arrive a little bit early, and as you get there, you turn onto 12th Street, which is this wide, sort of bustling city street with different simulated uh, shop fronts and large buildings sort of in the background that get larger the farther off you go. Uh, you see the street splits off in three different directions at the other end of the street. And as you get there, this is one of the, the entrances into this area, essentially, into the, um, this part of the city. But it's just and, empty, right? Like, besides the, the window dressing of the environment, there's nobody there. Yes. Generally speaking, there is no one there. But as you arrive early, how early do you get there? Say 20 minutes. 20 minutes? 20 okay. Minutes. So 20 minutes early, you're getting there, and you do see uh, there is this large sort of screen on a um, this billboard sized sort of uh, terminal that is out front, sort of on a corner, right in front before the, the entrance onto the street. There are a few of these spaced out in front of each entrance. And at the moment, there is a, uh, the, the text on the screen reads that the training grounds are currently in use. Do I and hear? as you stand here looking, there's nothing preventing you from going in, but you do hear sounds of a struggle. You hear what sounds like these like, poof, poof, like energy blast sounds of something shimmering, some sort of plasma maybe effect that you're familiar with splashing against metal and against sides. You hear occasional grunts and yells. You hear this sound that almost sounds like, poof, like beating wings. And as you... Uh, as you look out kind of into the distance, you occasionally see these flashes of orange energy. You see this huge hawk, this like just big ass bird flying over between buildings and then disappearing out of your sight. How far off is it? Um, I would say it's about maybe a hundred feet away from you. Oh, she's going there. She's already walking there. <laughs> You're Okay. You're just going to go in? Yeah. I'm just going to yeah. watch. Okay. I go to the school now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as you step through the city, you make your way down the street, you turn the corner into the, the more financial district area with these tall buildings, and you look up and you see that there are these training dummy robots. They are uh, smooth with dark black and gray iron or steel uh, plating, very rounded, kind of unsettling. They simulate various like human body types there are big bulky ones and they're like more thin ones and they're they're all uh they're either like flying on on like rocket feet or they're down on the ground and you see uh you get there just in time to see that big hawk sort of sailing down to ground level toward one of these robots and right as the hawk gets to the robot you see its body shift and contort and turn into this large tiger. And the tiger pounces on the robot and kind of tears its throat out and you see the wiring kind of spraying everywhere. You see uh, another figure up topside, uh, a, a young lady who you saw before on your way into the, um, into the Coliseum when you arrived there early, <laughs> as you always do. Uh, you see this tall, slender, 
a uh, young lady wearing a romper. It's very like functional, but really fashionable, tied, uh, cinched with this sort of hempen belt in the center. You see she's wearing this woven necklace. You see she's got a backpack on. Uh, and at the moment, her hair is just this flowing mane of orange energy. Her eyes are glowing orange. And coming out the back, either out of either side of her <laughs> backpack, are these big glowing orange butterfly wings made of energy. And that's when you realize this is you saw you saw her before. Um, you're watching her flying up above, just hucking these balls of orange energy out of her hands as she flutters <laughs> through the sky. Um, you also see Teatro is here as well. You see him sort of ducking through the shadows uh, off in the corner. You see him sort of standing on a street corner. You watch the panther or tiger creature turn around and growl in Teatro's direction. Teatro sort of scoffs. You see him make this sort of shape with his hands against the side of a building where sunlight is streaming and you see the shadow of the kind of shadow puppet that he's making. And that shadow of a bird that he's making becomes three dimensional and emerges from the side of the building into an actual bird made of shadow. As he then casts his hands out, you see the bird fly out toward uh, this other robot that is currently grappled with another young lady that you had seen Teatro speaking to. You see uh, Matroshka. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh... I forgot she's on this yeah. squad. She's kind of she's kind of short, right? She's sort of a yeah, short lady I, with I, uh, with yeah. long straight blonde hair, just sort of mm -hmm. big blue eyes, and you see that she is currently uh, duplicated herself. There are several clones of her. I would say there's maybe four mm -hmm. other clones of her at the moment, and each one of them is just a little bit shorter than her. Yes, strangely. <laughs> And I love it. Yeah. <laughs> they're currently sort of overwhelmed trying to pile onto this one big robot that's just like throwing her off. You see uh, that the, the butterfly winged young lady up above is throwing down these energy blasts, but they're just splashing ineffectively off of this thing's, uh, off of this thing's hide. And one of them actually hits one of her clones and you see, you hear her go, ow, monarch, you need to aim a little better. Um, and, as Teatro sends this bird out, it just sinks and seeps into the cracks of this thing's armor, and you see bits of the plating <laughs> pop out as this thing <laughs> shuts down. Can the ask, tiger figure... Can I ask, does Matryoshka's uh, face look progressively more smudged, like Natasha says? The <laughs> <laughs> okay, she's your character, so if you want that to be how it works, yeah, that can yeah, be how it works. Absolutely. Her features get a little more distorted. <laughs> Okay. Um, That's so great. Does her so, voice get higher? Yeah, as, <laughs> yeah, as the last of these of these robots is destroyed, I would say the duration of time that you're just watching this fight, that's enough time for you two to arrive. So when you get here and you hear these sounds happening, do you guys approach as well or do you just wait on the outskirts of the city listening to the battle? I definitely go in. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to be alone, so I guess I follow. Okay. Uh, come on. So the two of you go and you see these sort of destroyed robot dummies throughout the street, and you see these people convene. Um, and staying back for a moment, you see sort of appearing from around a corner. Actually, no, not from around a corner levitating down from a from a like a high building where he had been watching out of your guys's sight is prestige their squad leader with his blue skin pointy white mustache and goatee yes. his hair just sort of flowing uh, also white hair um with this billowing cape and his flowing white shirt with the chest exposed you see his eyeball necklace sort of floating there he lands very gracefully like clapping gently for his team. He brings them all in as he speaks to them. He sort of starts shaking hands. He's, he's giving pointers. Everyone is nodding a little bit. They're, they're too far for you guys to hear what, what they're discussing. And Prestige moves back from them and then begins to glide upward and away out of your guys' sight. 
you see they turn, that group turns and starts walking in your direction back toward campus proper. As this happens, um, you see that the, the lady with the butterfly wings notices you guys. She's the first to see you. And her face just lights up and she flies over to you guys and lands and the wings come inward. Um, her eyes fade from orange to just like a brown color. And you see her energy hair turns into just a long, very styled, just immaculate hair sprayed long like mane of sort of like a, uh, I would say like kind of a chocolate brown colored hair that she has. And she walks up to you and you can see now like this is a fashionable lady. Like this romper that she's wearing, um, like her makeup is just done to the nines. Like she is super, super fashionable lady. And she just runs up to you. She was flying, so she got there first. And as she gets up to you, she looks you guys over. She goes, oh my God, you, you're, are you, you're the ones, right? The ones that got chosen by Pantheon. <laughs> well, um, look, I, I knew that orientation was going to be wild, but I never thought that anything like that would happen. <laughs> it's so good to meet you. And are she's we just all sort together of like, at this point? Yeah, you guys yeah. are all together at this okay, point. Okay, perfect. My name is Monarch, by the way. Um, so, um, Harriman. Harriman, look at you. That outfit is weird. <laughs> you and I have to do lunch, darling. Uh, <laughs> I have to know absolutely everything about you. Oh my yeah. God, I love her. Uh, uh, sh sure. Um, yeah, totally. Uh, well, sure. <laughs> Paramount making friends is my favorite thing I've ever seen. <laughs> um, <laughs> hitting the table. And you're, uh, oh, uh, silhouette. It's it's incredible to meet you. Yeah, I, yeah. I reach out my hand and I like go out to shake my hand or shake. She takes hand. it. And you're the um, you're the bangity one, right? With the finger blasters. <laughs> the bangity one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Got a little energy blast in myself. I Don't like to brag was... about it. Pretty impressive. Uh, yeah, um, bang bang, you can call me BB. I will, yeah, that's fun. <laughs> um, as you see this huge tiger sort of sauntering up, it catches up now. You see its figure as it rises up onto two legs, it shrinks down into the size of a young man who is uh, also just aggressively fashionable but in sort of like a 1950s sort of prep school kind of a way. Um, he's wearing like functional skinny jeans that might actually be jeggings. Um, when are skinny jeans ever not functional though? That's, that's true. Um, he's got uh, like nice shoes that he's wearing. You see he's got a collared shirt tucked into a belt that's like buttoned down to the sternum with a leather jacket over top that's almost sort of a, like a leather like letterman jacket that he's wearing. Uh, big smile, blonde hair that's like combed very neatly in sort of a greaser style. And as he comes up to you, he flashes you this big style, or this big, this big smile and big style. And he stretches his hand out first to Bang Bang and he goes, it is an absolute pleasure to meet you. I've, uh, I've heard a lot <laughs> about this group since yesterday. You know, you guys are the talk of the town. Or the school, I guess. <laughs> uh... BB will reach his, her hand out and like, you know, shake it a little bit too hard, uh, asserting a touch of dominance. Uh, I didn't know we were so uh, peculiar. Well, I mean, you get chosen by a hero that was presumed dead for 25 years. Uh, you know, people are going to talk. I'm, I'm not really one for gossip myself. I mean, I have way too much on my plate as it is, and it's a little childish in my opinion, but it is what it is, you know? Whatever keeps people happy, right? Can we talk about how Prestige has a team of TikTok teens? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm so rude. My name is Mr. Menagerie. Mr. Menagerie. <laughs> oh, Mr. Menagerie. <laughs> wow. Wow, yeah, I'm, I'm speechless. Uh, and you want us to, uh, you want us to call you that. <laughs> well, you don't have to. 
uh, I don't know what else you would call me. Maybe behave, and I kind of like <laughs> n- nudge. Uh, I know, and- it's a little campy, but uh, can't go wrong with the classics, am I right? No, it's wonderful. I mean, uh, uh, you know, talk of the school, I... I wouldn't have thought that. Uh, did you say cool? Did you say people were calling us cool? Uh, <laughs> as he turns, you see uh, Matroshka as all of her different clones are sort of all speaking at the same time. And then they each like absorb into her. as She walks up to you guys excitedly. And she goes, well, if, if it helps, I think that you are cool. Wow. <laughs> um. And sorry, what was your name? Oh, I am Matroshka. Matroshka. I, I, what, the things you guys were doing. I mean, that's cool. That is very cool. Ah, well, um, we were just doing our best. But it truly is an honor to meet you, all of you. Um, This this is crazy. I mean, what, what has it been like being on prestigious team right uh mr menagerie is the first to answer he kind of steps he he seems to be like trying to assume this natural leader position like he he stands in the middle of the group a little bit ahead kind of puts his hands on his on his hips as he speaks keeps his chin up um definitely the harry styles of the group (laughs) a little bit he has that energy and he goes well, every team operates a little bit differently, but, you know, Prestige really wanted to get the ball rolling. We were here bright and early with his own personal training routine. Things are, are really going well. Uh, speaking of which, gang, we, we really should uh, should hit it. I, I would invite you all, really, I would, but I, Prestige said that he had something special planned for our first day of training. You understand. No, of, of course, of course. I mean, yeah, I mean, we're all here because, you know... Uh... Pantheon told us to be here, but we don't know what's in store yet, I guess. He looks at his watch, which looks like a very expensive watch. And as he reads it, he goes, oh, look at the time. Yeah, I mean, Pantheon ought to be here uh, any minute. How did you know what time she was going to be here? Well, this place is slotted out every hour. So, Uh, I mean, if you guys are here early for your appointment, I would only assume that you're training Starts at 10. Yeah. Right. Where's Teatro in all of this? You look we... around for him and uh, go ahead and make a... I'm going to say make an intelligence roll. I was just about to ask too. Oh, uh, that is a, you can a do one well. die roll for <laughs> BB. Uh, that's a, oh, that's a nat so one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, you don't nat see Nat one, baby. BB's looking around at the you. ground like, where's Teatro? <laughs> Yeah, the, you guys are looking around, um, and you see that Matroshka notices as well, and she's looking around, and she actually, her, her eyes kind of catch this portion of uh, shadow, like kind of under a, what are the, damn, the posters next to a bus bench, you know what I mean? That's yeah, like the, sure. with the awning. Yeah, mm-hmm. he he's sort of standing in the shadow of that, but you only see a shadowed outline. You don't actually see him. Boy. Like he's disappearing <laughs> into the shadows. And she goes, "Don't you think that we should wait for Teatro before we go?" And um, Menagerie just sort of like goes like this. He goes, "Oh, he's a big boy. He'll catch up. Come on, guys." <laughs> um, Excuse me. That's my son. He walks forward. <laughs> Matroshka kind of hangs back and she looks back and she goes, um, I will, I will wait over by the, the front gates for when you come. Okay. Good talking to you. And she, she like scuffles off and, uh, you see Monarch is still just beaming with this big toothy grin that she has. And she's just like, we, we particular are going to catch up later. All right. I'm holding you to that, dear. All right. Good to meet you all. <laughs> the wings come up and she just flies off. She leaves this trail of like orange glitter behind her as she goes. Flying off with my heart, jeez. <laughs> you guys are left sort of standing here together as Teatro emerges from the shadows. 
you see today that he's still wearing that black hood that's up with his dark, dark brown hair in curls spilling down his face with his olive eyes just like peering through the curls looking at you. But today, um, he's actually wearing a sleeveless shirt underneath his, his long cardigan thing. And you can see uh, that on his arm is tattooed in black and white, this very stylized image of uh, the comedy and tragedy masks oh, kind of cool. next to each other. And as he walks up to you guys very slowly, he looks you all over, but his eyes fall specifically on BB. And he goes, I hope you have given a little more thought to what I have told you before. Oh, what? You mean about like the uh, Dr. Guest or whatever his name is and uh, how he proclaims ill portents, ill omens? No, nah, I haven't been thinking about that all night at all. <laughs> hmm. A shame. I have given it much thought. If any of you would like to have some real answers, meet me in the library at sundown. Perhaps you will come to see how everything is connected. Good day. Mm. And Maybe he kinda... just walks off. Yeah. Uh, bye, bye. Teatro. <laughs> Bibi, what the hell was that about? What was what about? The... What, All the... that. What, what, the, the great talking to him? Or who? To Teatro. Why is he being all up in your space, I guess? I don't know. What? what, what <laughs> I, I met him yesterday. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't know anything about him besides he looks really sad all the time. <laughs> okay. And he has I... a tattoo on his arm of the comedy and tragedy masks. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Him, him and, uh, you know, Dr. Guest are just giving me some, some weird vibes. That whole squad is weird. They all had different accents. Did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> um, um, we go to a school of mainly superpowered people. I think almost everyone is going to be weird. <laughs> You're weird. Yes. Silhouette is weird. <laughs> Yes. 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 Okay. I'm a little bit weird. But only a little bit. Where is Pantheon? Do any of you have a watch or anything that tells time? BB I, has Yeah, I think someone I have, would also have a watch. Yeah. We we all have our <laughs> Wait, Natasha, I, what's the watch that you have? Oh the one that you're it, always flexing with? I know it actually broke. It's a Casio. Yeah. Um, it broke I, recently, though. I so feel I like Silhouette it. has one of those, like, nerdy watches. With... Okay, it tells time, obviously, because it's a watch. Uh, but it also, uh, if you press a little button, it, like, uh, it lights up. And uh, in case you want to see what time it is in the dark. And then also, um, it can, it can uh, uh, you can time things. <laughs> <laughs> and you can set an alarm and you can see uh what time it is in a different country if that's what you're about <laughs> so as you look uh, as you look down at your watch it is <laughs> it is 10 01 a.m and as you're looking at this you feel this woof, this gust of wind and it blows your hair back and you look up and you see pantheon just woof, just vibrating and then down into her regular form standing in front of you guys um, today she's just wearing uh, just sort of like a, like an athletic tank top and uh, her classic just athletic sort of yoga pants and sneakers that she wears. She looks down at her watch as well. She goes, damn, almost, really, almost made it. How we feeling, gang? Doing all right today? Yeah, more or less. Yeah, I mean, uh, earlier we saw... Uh prestigious group and uh they were pretty cool not gonna lie they were pretty cool yeah prestige uh, knows how to pick them all right quirky guy that one so uh listen i'm not gonna beat around the bush this is our first training day i need to see what you guys can do i need to see how you can work as a team and i need well 
I need a lot of things and I'll keep my own counsel on uh, what those things are. Right now, all you need to know, she reaches into her pocket and she pulls out this little sort of velvet black drawstring bag. It's about like, like this, like you can hold it in one hand. She holds it up and she goes, this is your goal. We're getting on some real Kakashi sensor I know. bullshit, are we? <laughs> just thinking that. She puts it back in her pocket. Oh, fuck. Her form vibrates, and you hear that mm. noise. You hear, mm. Mm. you see two clones of herself kind of shift out of her body on either side. One of them poof, takes off at light speed, running down one, um, down one corner of the street, like off out of sight. The other takes off, just flying at a high speed, off in another direction. Um, as they go off, she tells you, currently, I am hiding this somewhere in the city. Your job is very simple. Find it, bring it back to me. You have as long as it takes to accomplish this goal, you will get no further hints, at least not from me. As I said, you have as long as it takes. That being said, for every hour extra that it takes you to do this, it's another 10 laps around the Coliseum that I'll be having you running at dawn. Any questions? No hints, like at all. Well, I'll tell you this. Uh, I've made a mistake. <laughs> what you're looking for is something you want. Let's call it a prize and a little nugget of truth. I keep ringing. <laughs> Do you want me to end it? Sure. Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, it's cool. It's good. Who has a home phone anymore? <laughs> <laughs> as pantheon finishes speaking she just stands there smiling she goes anything else do we start now she sort of holds a finger up in the air you see both of those forms <laughs> collide back into her and just shift like a ghost, just instantly, seamlessly back into her body. You see the other whoosh, flying through the air, just land in her own form, and she's one again. You see the after images of the other two versions of herself shift for a moment, and then whoosh, back into her solid form. Come find me in the food court when you're done. Mm. Time begins. I'm sorry, did you have a question? Oh, no, I'll ask you later. It's not important right now. Your time begins. Now, <laughs> she disappears in a blur of speed down back toward the campus. I'm not entirely convinced that she didn't just take whatever that was with her right now. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think she probably is really testing us, you know. I thought we were going to have to catch her, which would be a problem because none of us have maneuverability powers. Uh... <laughs> But what is something that we want? Accolade? I don't know. Like an award? I want answers as to why this is all so weird so far. Uh, as uh, sorry, I was going to say, uh, Maybe uh, in the bag, there's going to be a little note, and the note is going to tell us where she's been for the last 25 years. <laughs> Y'all ever think about that? I'm thinking about it right now. Uh, I guess <laughs> we're going to see. Uh, so as, as BB looks around, um, I know asking for just what the general environment is like is super vague, but is there anything that seems to stick out, that looks like it's kind of, no, that's a strange question. 
That's a fair question. What's the, yeah, well, I, I guess, is there anything strange sticking out right now? And what is the general layout of what is around us? So the general layout of what is around you at the time being, you it looks like you're in this sort of um, storefront area. You know, if you go to like Burbank and you get into that area that is very clearly like big businesses and different like TV and comic book companies and places, just these big buildings that are all clustered together with like sort of garden courtyards in between them you know, yeah. like that sort of thing. Yeah. But you know how like around that area, you'll get sort of areas of like streets with different business hubs and restaurants and things that, that have made their their livelihood being near that area, right? You're sort of in that area right now. There are sort of simulated restaurants and businesses. Uh, you see a few different stores are that the are stores just here. like named things? Like are they, is everything... They're not like, like there, real there, brands or anything okay. like that. But is there like a sporting goods store? An yes. Electronic store. Okay. Yes. And looking through the windows, like they seem to be genuinely stocked with what those things would be. Um, you said when Pantheon clone makes her little clones, mm -hmm. they look exactly like her. They're Identical. Not... Okay. And she put the item in her pocket before she yeah. changed. Or split, rather. Okay. So in a way, it was kind of like the ball in the cup game, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which one was it in? Yeah. Oh, fuck. <laughs> now, uh, Silhouette, I know you're real good with technology. Does that extend to being able to, like, talk with technology? Or are you just kind of good at putting it together? Um, maybe it's more so like making things. Uh, so, uh, maybe I could make something that could read like a code or like possibly question mark. Um, I don't see why that couldn't work, but it would really depend on what it is. How much ground do we have to cover roughly? Do we know? Um, it's it's a decently small city. I mean, it looks like it's just one financial district and surrounding um, areas, like surrounding storefronts and stuff. So it's not that much ground. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, you gather, because she told you you were meeting on 12th Street. Yeah. This is 12th Street. Mm -hmm. This It's this one area of Training Grounds West, or the, the West Training City. Paramount. There are others on campus too. I, I must ask, and this may sound like I'm being funny, but I, but I, but I, but I am being serious. Would you be able to smell her out, <laughs> like where she was? Is that you, not a thing? You can put out sense. Do you have smelling ability too? Yeah. N no. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Rats. I'd like to think that Bang Bang and Silhouette said, oh, oh, at the same time. I mean, it could be. How far is it to the cafeteria from here? Like back time wise. To the other way? Yeah. Um, probably like a. T uh, maybe a 15 minute walk? We could go check if she does have it. Just to cover that base. But I mean, like, what if she gets mad at us if, like, we return and then, like, we don't have it? <laughs> I mean, I'm not afraid of running laps. I, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot, well. Your earlier question, Eric, uh, about, like, do you see anything weird? You're welcome yeah. to take a look around. Oh, yeah, sure. I'd love to examine the surroundings for anything that seems to stick out to BB. Yeah, go ahead and make an intelligence roll. That's, that's <laughs> her worst thing. <laughs> I'll tell you what you see immediately anyway, but uh, just to see if you notice anything success. particularly. Hmm? One success out of one. Out of one. Okay, so that, that is a full success for you. So you're looking around. One thing that does catch your eye is this sort of monorail even though everything else seems to be more or less shut down, 
the monorails are running. And as you look up, you see one of the tracks moving off and it, like both of them are, are sort of above the street. There are two different tracks that are going through the top level above you that ride parallel with the street. It splits off in two different directions down the street and both of the, the ways that you watched the two Pantheon clones go followed that line, at least before she disappeared. What if we followed those, uh, this accent's really just going in and out. Uh, what if we were to follow those monorails? Is that what they're called? Uh, we could, uh, that seemed to be the general direction that Pantheon went. We could split up as much as I hesitate to say it. Monorails would definitely be a great idea. Could you stop the monorails? If we were to find the uh, control box or whatever. A control box for the monorails? Uh, I mean, I guess so. I could always try. Is there like a um, station, a monorail station in eyesight? Not on eyesight, no. Do we have, all have a way to communicate with each other? Do we have cell phones? Or something. Yeah, cell phones okay. exist. It's up to you if you've exchanged numbers. <laughs> Gonna have to now. <laughs> All right, let's get in the group call. Everyone, give me your numbers. <laughs> <laughs> My number exchanged... is five 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 five. five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Paramon will hand over the number to BB reluctantly. <laughs> <laughs> Are we splitting uh, up? Is this what we're doing? Uh, I mean, we can cover more ground that way. You get, you all get your your phones ping, and there's just a text that says "Howdy." <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, how are we gonna do this then? Uh, are we going? You two go that way, and I go this way. Hmm. Is there a third direction? Should we fully split up? Yeah, that's true. There's a third direction, but she didn't... That's the one she didn't go down. Mm. She made two of herself, and they, they split. Or one of us could go down that way, but I didn't see her go that way or come back through it. I'll go down that way. Just All in right. case. Uh, keep in contact with Say, and we'll meet back here in like 30 minutes. 45 minutes. Okay. Sure. I, I mean, it might make more sense to do shorter intervals, but... 15 minutes? Yeah. Great. All right. Team break. She just goes slouching off in the direction that she chose. <laughs> okay. Okay. I start jogging. Which of you wants to go first? In description here. I'll go first. You'll go first? Yeah. Okay. So you're going down the middle path? Yes. Okay. So you head straight down the middle path, which leads directly into um, the financial district area. Mm -hmm. You start seeing these huge square buildings. Some of them kind of have that mirrored look. Um, most of them, you really can't see anything inside. There are some like fake company names that are put here. Some of them are, are like puns on real things in this world. Not this world, but in our world. Um, and you step into this, uh, this courtyard area and you're looking around for any signs that anyone has been here. What are you doing? I guess I'm looking for anything out of place, but also anything that might resonate with what BB would want, because Haramon doesn't really want anything aside from just getting through the program and she doesn't know what uh silhouette necessarily wants 
And Bibi's the only one who's, uh, who's uh, ever really kind of been direct. Um, so anything with like with that in the back of the mind of like what we would want and what would give us answers, like try to look for anything that just stands out, I guess. Okay. Go ahead and make a willpower check for me. Oh, I'm good at that. That's, oh my God, four and above is a success? Yes. So four, and six is two. That's four out of three. Four out of three. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So oh, yeah. as as you're looking around, your eyes fall on the grass area. Mm -hmm. You're in this this sort of central courtyard. Um, there's this this big fountain in the center. There's seating. There are all of these benches and places. But eat, there there are these big patches of grass all around, uh, in in sort of this stylized circle here. As you look, you do very definitely notice there is a streaked path of grass that has been displaced. Mm -hmm. And as you follow that with your eye line, it looks like it curves all around the circle, almost in a U-turn mm -hmm. and comes all the way back. And as you're doing this, you hear in the distance a scream, a sharp sort of sound, but it doesn't sound like any particular voice that you know. And it's there, and then it's gone. You look up instinctively in the direction of the scream, and you see in the closest building to you, one of those tall mirrored buildings where you can't really see inside, you see one of the windows <sighs> shatter with this huge explosion. It's blown open by it looks like maybe some sort of energy blast of some kind. It is a, this smoking hole now. And that's what you see. Oh, uh, geez. Um, I'll call it in first. Um, call out what I see in the, in the grass to, every, to everyone and be like, and also there's an explosion in one of the buildings. Uh, and then is it like a big explosion something we should be worried about yeah yeah pretty big you should oh probably God, is this a three-way if you call? haven't if yeah, you haven't a voice call. if you haven't found anything yet you should probably come over here maybe and then can you drop a pin for us oh yeah <laughs> Just a bit, bit. Okay. and then start to investigate how to get to there maybe um, there is a, there's a couple things you could do. You notice that this is one of the buildings where the monorail sort of loops back to. Mm -hmm. It's like there is a stop here, um, but it goes through kind of in the opposite direction. So you would be able to, if you got up to the track, get in that way mm -hmm. and you'd be maybe like one floor down from where you needed to be. It looks like it, it might be on the like, 10th or 11th floor. Oh, Jesus. Um, um, but there is also a door, like the front door to the building that you could take as well. I will also note, you're listening again for that sound, that scream that you heard. And as you think back on it, you play it in your mind, you can't really process it. Your brain can't recreate the exact sound of the scream as you try to think of it it almost feels like you didn't really hear it. Mm. It doesn't really make a lot of sense to you, I think. Yeah. I think, is there any sort of way that it looks like I could get onto the monorail track from where I am? Yeah, so looking around, uh, you in the time it takes you to investigate this, I'd say that's enough time for you guys to get because you didn't go that far in. No. Um, you look around and you do see uh, pretty close by at a corner, there is an area that's sort of like the monorail stop, and there's a stairway up to a platform where you could get on it. Okay. The monorail itself is not actually like there. The track is just there. Okay. Not gonna lie. Don't know if this is a distraction or not. 
because I can't actually recall hearing anyone scream, even though I heard someone scream. So, might uh, not even be worth investigating. But you saw an explosion. Yeah, right there. You guys look up and you can see that there's a big smoking hole where glass has fallen and shattered. Is anyone else around us? Like, are any students around us? And if there are, are they looking up at it? There's no one else here. You guys have this area booked for the hour. And it doesn't Possibly for the day. <laughs> it doesn't appear like there's anything really happening up there. Like there hasn't been any more movement besides the explosion. Go ahead and make a, go ahead and make a willpower for me. Okay. Uh, I'll ask uh, Harriman as well. And there hasn't been any other uh, movements after the explosion. Did I notice anything? I guess I was looking at other down. stuff. Yeah, you were investigating other stuff. I don't remember how much willpower I have. Oh, yeah, that was a, a, a zero out of one. Zero out of one. You're uh, looking. You're looking up, and as you are looking, you very clearly see another just uh, blast of this bright orange energy like a beam just sort of like poof, actually less of a beam and more of like a just a big pulse like a shot of it sails out of the window and you hear this like <laughs> sounds of of things crashing getting louder it sounds like there's a big ruckus up there orange energy similar to our friend we just saw <laughs> uh you saw the energy of her wings not the blasts mm -hmm. that she did mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um you're not sure it's it could be if we get up to the monorail thing can we see down into the scene at all into what scene like we're on the track and then the the hole where the explosion is is like right here can we see down into it on from off of the track didn't I say that the hole was above the track? I thought you said... It's like 10 stories up. Right? Oh. I must have flipped those in my mind. Mm -hmm. Okay. I could be wrong. For the sake of my own continuity, I'll just pretend that I said it, it is up. Okay. The, hole, the hole is like one floor up from where the track would, would spill you into the building. Okay, look. I want to save people. That's all I'm about. That's all I want to do is save people. But our assignment right now is to find the thing, whatever it may be. I don't know if our that you know U-turn track makes me think that this is just a distraction, and we don't actually like. Don't really need to do whatever this is. We're just getting ourselves into trouble. It also might be a double bluff. You might be right. Maybe we just go into the building. And if we don't find the little black bag that she asked us to find, we leave. BB, you hear another scream. And now you've heard it. Uh, I heard a scream. Uh, it sounds... It's loud, it's real, and it's scared. Yeah, let's, let's go. It's That person needs uh, help. Uh, so our options are essentially climb the monorail thing and jump in from there. But is there like... Is there a front door, some stairs? I just don't know how we're gonna get up to that monorail platform. You would you would take the stairs up to the to the platform. Okay. And you can Perfect. just get That's... on the track and, and walk it. Okay, awesome. I didn't if you want that to. There was... Or you can just go through the doors and go up the building. The elevator. Ooh. We got plan A or plan B. Monorail stairs or building stairs. Which one are we doing? Yes, monorail. Let's do it. Okay. BB hustles okay. off towards the monorail stairs. I follow along. So you climb up uh, onto the platform and you guys just start walking along this monorail, which is a little bit, it's a little dubious because you know how the monorail is, it kind of wraps around a sort of maglev track. Mm -hmm. So it's not particularly... Um, a, a level surface the way you would like comfortably walk on you kind of have to wrap around the upraised magnet area and you're carefully inching along you get up there 
and you continue, it, it gets louder now and you can hear the, the sort of stomping around sounds. Um, Haramon, you don't hear any further screams. You didn't hear the last one either. Hmm. All right, uh, I'm hearing, oh, do you guys hear these screams? Cause I'm- Not at all. Someone's in trouble. N- not at all. Which is why it's weird. <laughs> I'm assuming Silovac can't hear anything. Uh, make a willpower, because now now you're here as well. Okay. Mm-hmm. Whoop, whoop, wah, wah. Okay. Uh, two successes out of two. Okay. Uh, so you're listening for it, and you do hear a scream, for sure. And you listen for it again, and you hear the stomping around sounds. You hear the sounds of energy blasts all throughout. Um, you don't hear the scream again. And when you try to replay the sound in your mind, you really can't recall exactly what it sounded like. Uh, I definitely uh, have heard it at this point, uh, but I'm on the same, uh, I got the same issues as Haramon. I can't recall it. Which is not boding well. Uh, all right, I guess we just continue on. Can we even tell what direction those screams are coming from? It seemed to be coming from where the, the ruckus is happening. Okay. You're hearing things being thrown around. You're hearing glass breaking. You're hearing energy blasts. So just like a, a mess of, of clattering sounds of a struggle, basically. And as we okay. get up closer to the... Um, uh, opening in the building. Can we see in? Yeah, so as you get up closer to the building, are you guys trying to be quiet at all? Um, yes. Also, um, can, uh, well, you said that, like, we can't, I can't recall the sound, right? Right. So, You recall that it happened, but you can't replay the sound of it in your mind. Okay, because now I'm wondering if this is just like, uh, like it's something that's happening just like all in our heads, right? Uh, Or at least for like, yeah, like all in our heads. Uh, So what if, could Silhouette, um, uh, I don't know, even with like her phone or something or like some kind of like tool that she has, like have it recording so that the next time we hear it, if we hear it, I can see if, like, it is, uh, like, being recorded, like, the sound levels or something. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Or if it's even there. Or if it's, like, if it's, like, registering, like, like, out into, like, our environment. Interesting. Okay. Because there's, like, probably not a lot of environment sounds if we're in an empty city. Do you want to call this as one of the devices that you have on you right now? As, um, as like a recording device of some kind? Yeah, I mean, like, her pockets are stacked. <laughs> I would assume she has something that would be able to record audio, even if it's just her cell phone. If if, I, if now we're, we have cell phones, you know? Okay. okay. Yeah, um, so you take that out. Go ahead and make an intelligence roll for me. Okay. With that. Okay. And if you have proficiency in, in gadgets or anything like that, I think you have something like that, right? Uh, it's a specialty. So d- what? specialty. So you reroll. You reroll all your fa- all your failures. Okay. Okay. Well, you can reroll each die that fails once. Okay. Oh, fuck! I dropped one. <laughs> um, oh my god! I don't know where it went. I'm just gonna grab another one. <laughs> okay. Wait. I'm so the test is gone forever now. Let me let, let me redo that. I'm so sorry. I didn't I didn't okay. even look. I swear. Okay. Okay, okay. I got one success out of three, so I get to, so I get to re-roll those two. Yes, the ones that failed. Yes. Oh shit! Okay, (laughs) um, that's one, two, four successes out of three. Four successes out of three. Okay. We out here. Here we out. So as you're looking at the device. You hold it up, trying to pick up the sound levels of this thing happening, trying to to register it happening. And as you hold it up to that area, you notice that it does pick it up, 
but it does it sort of strangely. It does it almost at a delay in a mm -hmm. way that is like not really how this device normally behaves. A scream from this distance and this level of ruckus should register, it should spike differently on your meter. It doesn't look quite right. It's okay. picking it up, but it's not picking it up at the levels you would expect. Okay. Um, I'm kind of like holding up the device, like up, and I'm like, um, guys, this, this just isn't reading right. Um, I'm, I'm a little scared to go in right now. Uh, this should be spiking way more. Uh, I think we just need to be careful when we go in, obviously, but you know. My my brain my uh my my brain's a little worried. It just it doesn't feel right. Like, I... as you guys are having this. Oh, sorry. Continue. No, that's that's fine. Yeah. As you're having this conversation right next to the hole, I need you to make stealth checks, everyone. What is to it? To see if you're having dexterity? this quietly. Uh, yeah, I would say it's dexterity. Dexterity. It's, it's a little dubious because you guys are talking, but it's that's what stealth would be. It's fine. Uh, three out of three. Two out of three. Zero out of three. <laughs> okay, so yeah, as I don't a group know. check, yeah, that was two-thirds success. It's fucking loud as fuck. <laughs> it just keeps spiking, and I just don't know what's... <laughs> Sorry. Okay. No, it's good. Um, so Sorry. you guys feel confident that whatever is up there has not heard you yet. So it's f fairly easy to get in there? Um, there's not really a good way to climb up the building mm -hmm. to get up there right now. Um, you'd probably have to go in and take the elevator up unless you could figure out some sort of way, some other way to like climb up there or something. But you're not really sure how you would do that. Silhouette, do you have anything that would let us climb up there or something? Like a, like a hook? Like a grappling hook? Or something? I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't have that. Uh, um, that'd be really cool if I did. Um, cool. Wasted our time. I mean, like, why don't we just go in? Uh, we could just go in. We don't even have to check with, like, the receptionist. We can just go in and go to the elevator. So we... <laughs> We can't get across from where we are on the monorail thing. Because um, we don't have any tool to. It it doesn't really look like it. I mean, there there. Okay, how about this? There is a little sort of tunnel area that sticks mm -hmm. out over this part that that like juts out. That's built out from the building to make it like a clean entrance for the monorail to enter the building. So you could climb up on top of that. It would take, uh, it would probably take a strength check to try and climb up there, but you could, you could climb that. Nah, dude, safety first. Haramon goes back down the stairs <laughs> and walks towards the building. Well, you could go through the hole in the building here and be a floor down and just take one elevator, oh, one floor up. Oh, I thought there was only one hole. One no, there, hole. I'm sorry. I, there's, there's the hole that whatever is up there has made that oh. is the, the hole that's blown open, and there's the hole on your floor that is built into the building for the monorail to enter. All right, let's do that. Let's just go in there, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you head into the floor that is a monorail terminal. You walk in and you do see an area of track. You see sidewalks that are built up with yellow lines behind which people must stand. You can see some sort of turnstiles. Um, there's a little booth, but there's, again, no one here. But you just hear this sort of buzzing, almost like rocket engine sound. This like <laughs> on the floor above you and occasional just <laughs> bangs, splashes of energy, things shattering, colliding against the walls. Are these still delayed like, uh, like wavelengths that I'm seeing? No, these readings look normal. Okay. Uh... It's registering. All right, y'all ready? Uh, yeah, let's take this elevator up. Is that the way to go? 
Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, if if you want to take the elevator one floor up, that is the way to go. Yes. Are there stairs? Yeah, there are stairs. They I'll can be stairs. stairs. You want to take the stairs? I'll, I'll take the stairs. Elevators. Take the stairs. Don't you trust, all take the stairs. Don't trust yeah. elevators at all. Okay. So you all take the stairs up. As you climb through the stairwell, you get to the door, you turn the knob, and you open it. Inside, you see this office space. Um, Well, actually, I think you would see you would see a hallway first, kind of a lobby, right? And as you step out into this lobby, you see an open office space door at the end of the hallway where the side of the building would be. Um, the door is blown off the hinges, and you hear that. <laughs> you see flashes of that orange energy that you saw before coming from that room. Can we stealth down the hallway? Yeah, go ahead and make uh, make new stealth checks for me. All of us? Yeah. And you said which one was that? Dex? Dex, I think. Yes. Dex, okay. Dex, okay. What if stealth is one of our skills? Um, then you re-roll one. one. How, many po- how many points do you have in it? The, like, there's a number by it? Is that what you're talking yeah. about? Three. Oh, no, I mean, um, skill. how many skill points do you have in stealth? Y- you put stealth as one of your skills, mm-hmm. specifically. How many points is next to that? Three. So you put all three of your skill points into stealth only? I guess so. Well, because okay. I don't have anything else there. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah then that, that would be it. Okay. Then you can re-roll up to three. You can re-roll failures. up to three, yeah. Dang. Uh, I got three out of three. I didn't realize that you had done that, that you'd put all of your skill points in one thing. That's cool. I think it's because I hadn't figured out, like, what else. Mm. And then I was like, this That's is good, good, man. That's a choice. It's a build. I like it. For I an invisible re-roll... person, it's very good. <laughs> okay, wait. So, I rerolled one of them, but then... Are you invisible, by the way? <laughs> I didn't think about it! <laughs> <laughs> um... Is it too late to say yes? No, you can you can be yeah. If, if, I, I just assumed you were, but then I realized like, oh wait. So we can we can flub this one if you if you say that you wanted to have been invisible. Yes. Okay. okay so go ahead and roll a d12 as well. Okay. Okay. On top oh, of it. Shoot. Okay. Wait. 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 So. Ah, okay. Wait. <laughs> so I was gonna ask. So I got. Okay. So one of the successes was a six. One of them was a five, and then another one was a three. Um, so that's three successes. Yes, but do I re-roll the one that I messed up on? Yeah, you can re-roll the failure. Even if... Okay, okay, okay. You have three okay. points in it, but technically you can only re-roll one die, if that makes sense. Okay. So... Okay. Yeah. And then... Uh, okay, in this so... moment, because you only failed one. Four. So, four successes out of three. And then, okay. what do I do with the d12? You you just roll it and you see if you have a seven and up that's just another success. Wait, D twenty or D twelve? Twelve. A seven and up is just another success on top of it. You're adding to degrees of success at this point. My brain. I'm so You're sorry. I didn't just know so goddamn invisible. Yeah. <laughs> twelve. Twelve. Okay, I found it. And then what does this? Uh, until I got a six. A six. Okay, so that's not a success, but it's okay. You're invisible. Okay. You still feel confident that you are being very quiet. I'm super what did invisible. you guys get? Four out of three. Four out of three. Three out of three. Three out of three. Okay. Um, so this is actually an opposed check. So this was not an out of something moment. I had rolled perception for whatever is on the other side of that door. So is anyone getting close enough to see what's in there? You guys feel very confident that you are unheard. The noise continues as it was going. You move down the hallway, seeing different office buildings and spaces throughout. You see a break room, and then you get to the opposite end of the room, and you just hear this sound. Who's looking in? I would say probably. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I guess all of us. Still, what's the most invisible? Stack Being, our true. heads on top of <laughs> yeah. the Being invisible, I am extreme, more confident than I usually would be. Uh, okay. So... There you go. That's you such look a mood. Inside. Yeah. <laughs> if, 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 
Joe goes first, then I will hang back. Okay. Yeah. You look inside and you see one of the training robots. And it is a like a tall sort of lanky one with that black iron plating all around it. Its eyes are glowing this menacing pale blue at the moment, and it's flying on rocket legs up above the top level of this office building, this larger office space at the end here. And it is just wrecking shit as it sails through on its rocket legs. It's picking shit up and throwing it, and then it's hucking out of, like, out of its hands. You see this panel opens up, and it's just shooting these orange energy blasts down as it's like, (sighs) it's destroying this place. But just this room. Just this room. And just this one robot. And yeah, just this one robot in here, and it looks like it's looking around the room. Um, I'm going to have you go ahead and make an intelligence check as you're looking at it. Me? Yeah. Okay. Because you're, you're who you are and you have this understanding of technology that you do, I think it makes sense that you're sort of looking at this thing to assess it. Okay, sick. Uh, hello? One, two, three. Three out of three. Three out of three, okay. So as you're looking at it, it's clearly behaving erratically. You have worked with these training dummies before during your evaluations. You know how they're supposed to behave. This thing seems to be malfunctioning somehow. And as you're looking at it, you see that there is some sort of gash sort of in the base of its neck and you see circuitry underneath. You see something sparking out the eyes are the wrong color. They're not supposed to be blue. And it's just flying around, destroying stuff. It's, it's, it must be damaged or something. This is not how it's supposed to behave. Okay. I, uh, are are uh, Haramone and Bang Bang right behind me? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I, like, I turn around. I'm so invisible. But uh, I, I reappear from the, the, <laughs> the, the neck up. And I just turn around and I'm like... Uh, I think there's something wrong with this robot. Uh, it, it's uh, it's not behaving the right way. Um, kind of like if like your virus, your computer gets like a virus, your virus gets a computer. Um, something's up with it. Uh, like, look at the neck. And I just like, uh, I point, but my arms are invisible uh, so they reappear and I point again (laughs) um uh not totally sure how to handle this well I wouldn't put it past Pantheon to just throw this randomly in here at us from the very little that I know about her but uh where's screaming coming from Ooh, There's no one in this room. Maybe it's the robot? Do we just um, put it out of its misery? Ah, uh, I mean, that's kind of like uh, my first guess, but uh, I'm not totally sure how we're going to like uh, rodeo that thing down. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, I could just shoot it yeah that that would be our choice i mean uh i'm just uh since since we're stealth and it hasn't noticed us can i line up a shot and take it before it yeah you can try you can certainly try do i have any rope i think that's a you question uh i mean it makes sense for me to have rope. It's, it, I feel like you're the only person have, here who it does make sense to yeah. have rope. <laughs> I can't. When, I will when have I, rope. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I'll take out the rope as BB's lining up a shot. Well, as I'm, as uh, as she's lining up a shot, she's kind of like, well, as I see it, we got two options. I don't think this is an issue, but we can just take it out to just do, you know, common courtesy, or we can move on and just go someplace else and not potentially get violent. Um, is, you said the robot was being really erratic, Mm -hmm. um, but does it look like it's like going to any particular part of the room? 
Nope. It's just flying around, destroying the room. Great. <laughs> um, are you looking at it again? Are you looking at it more? Yeah. Okay. So as you are continuing to look at this thing, you're watching it fly around and you catch a glimpse of it from the front as it turns around. You see drawstrings tied around its neck and you see the black satin bag dangling from its neck. Ah! Uh, there it is. Uh, that's the thing. Guys, the, the bag, the bag is on the robot. The bag's on the robot. Wait, you see the bag on the robot? Where? You've not. It's right there. Oh. Right, and I just point, <laughs> point to the chest. Would they be able to see it, or am I just crazy? Um, so you are the one who saw the bag. Yeah. Um, I need you guys to make uh, willpowers. All of us? To just, like, look at... Yeah, I'm counting your the intelligence roll that you made looking at it. Okay. Uh, if you guys want to do it as intelligence, I just figured that both of you are more willpower tracking. than intelligence. No. Zero out of one. One out of three. One out of three? Mm -hmm. Zero out of one. Zero out of one. Okay. Um, yeah, you clearly see it. Okay, so we can't uh, just bang bang the thing out of existence. Uh, we actually need to control it. Um, um. If we can well, distract it, maybe you can sneak up behind it and lasso it with my rope long enough for one of us to then, one of us being me or, or BB, um, to take it down cleanly. What, you don't think I can lasso? I can't. That's one of the few things I can't do. <laughs> in this moment, as you guys are having this conversation and you're looking and you're, you've clearly seen this bag hanging, you guys start to hear distant crashes like out in the city. And then you hear this alarm just wailing all through the hallways. All over, just loudly. It seems like it's through the entire city. We were, you see we kind of flashing lights for a moment, and you see these hidden PA systems up in the hallways, and you hear a voice Attention, student body. West Training City has been compromised. The training dummies have been remotely accessed by an unknown source and are currently considered dangerous and an active threat. Oh, you hate West to see City that. will be placed <laughs> under quarantine until help arrives. Oh, Evacuate immediately. Well, I guess that goes the answer for our plan. Baby, would you like to take the shot? Sure. Uh, can I just pop one off? Whoa. Yeah. Whoa As you're that. saying this, Wait. Silhouette, you're listening to them talk about something. You don't know what they're talking about. You didn't hear shit. Um, what are you guys talking about? What, what do you mean? Okay, I'm gonna pull everyone back from the actual like doorway where we were. For you guys, the alarm sounds are still just blasting. You don't hear this happening. What happening? The loud ass alarm saying that the robots are compromised and that this area is currently under quarantine. You quarantine. don't hear that at all. Yeah. Okay, like are you guys like joking? No. No. I don't hear anything. I'm going to take a picture with my cell phone that I have what, of the wait. robot. Let's look at your device again. Is oh. anything going off? 
Is anything going off? Is anything popping off? Yeah, to you guys who are not like technologically initiated, it looks normal. Um, but to you looking at the readings, the sounds that are happening, it's, it's difficult to say. You're looking at the alarm sounds and the levels are not right. Again, the, as loud as they're describing it, something like that should be, it's just not quite right. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. but like... I'm just going to inch up and go and take a picture of the robot. Make sure it's like truly a robot that is there and going crazy. Not like a vampire. You try to robot. take a picture of the robot. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, just like double check that it's on silent and the flash is off and just inch <laughs> up. Yeah, oh, yeah. No. Make either an intelligence or a willpower <laughs> check. Do it for the gram. <laughs> Everyone's got a lot of followers on Instagram. That is True. two out of three. Two out of three. So you take a picture, you look, you see the robot. Mm -hmm. Clearly from the front, no bag on its neck. All right. Do I see? No! Do you, do you show your phone to us? Yeah. All right. Well, this was a massive waste of time. Let's go one of the other directions. We just spent like a goddamn hour trying to get <laughs> into this. Okay, let's go. I, we're not wasting any more time with dumb illusions. But, but then how do we know what, like, if anything is real? I ask myself that every day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you guys are still standing out of this room and you're speaking very loudly. Yeah. Be are you, is this on purpose? I mean. Sure, yeah. It seems a little weird to make new stealth rolls when you guys are like emoting and I'm going to take from that performance if that's okay with you guys. That's okay. Sure. That's fair. You're not being quiet anymore. Especially seems, it seems that you guys think that these are illusions. Well, I don't think the, well, I, I was there, right? Yeah, it was in the picture. From that performance, I wasn't necessarily implying I was speaking that loud. That's just okay. the emotion that she has. Um, I, I think they, since the robot's still on the camera, it's still a perceivable threat. Okay. Um, then take this, please take this as me asking you guys if you guys were actually speaking loudly or if this is just for the benefit of, of the camera, I guess. I think you can see Haramone, like working in her mind, not really paying attention to what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, so for the most part, when I'm quiet, I'm quiet, and when when I'm loud, I'm loud. You know, performance wise. Um, but definitely, right now, Haramone is like, wait, what does that mean? You know. Okay. Okay. BB walks towards the elevator. <laughs> Fuck. I, I don't, I don't, I don't think we should leave. Why? That's not our goal. It doesn't have the bag. That's our goal. Our goal isn't just to, you know, whatever. There's no one here to save. Then, it's then, just a robot. Then where are we supposed to go? And just what let this, like, robot just, like, crash and everything. It's not I, our job right now. We're just going to potentially get ourselves hurt. I think more than anything, this is a communication exercise. Uh, We're all hearing and seeing different things designed to confuse us. I don't think it's about saving anyone as much as you would like it to be. The question is, is this still worth our time to investigate? Uh, you make a great point, Haramon. Uh, I don't know what to do anymore, <laughs> and I'm losing my cool. <laughs> so my question for you is, do you want to be told what to do, or do you want to vote what to do? That's a great point. Uh, I don't know. Look, okay. Things we know for sure. There's not a living person in there. 
who gives a shit about this office uh it doesn't have the bag and that's what we're supposed to do like we can see from your photo there's nothing there the robots there certainly but nothing else is so i i just don't want us to like why why potentially get ourselves hurt if we don't have to okay I mean, yeah. we don't know what's going to be down the other two streets. There could be more robots like that. True. True. The noise outside is getting progressively louder. It sounds like chaos outside. There are crashes and distant blasts of energy. Look, you, Haramon, you hear that, right? Yeah. If we go outside and there's nothing there, I think we just move on. Okay. We can always come back. That's true. Unless the entire building blows up, but <laughs> then that's not my fault. <laughs> so what are we what are we doing? You guys are going down one We're of the other down. two directions. Okay, so you're taking the elevator back down. Yeah. Taking the stairs back down. Take the stairs. You take the stairs down ten flights. Okay, so Before you guys. Before we leave, I uh, to the robot. <laughs> you guys rush down ten flights of stairs, down into this very nice yet unpopulated lobby. But you can see that the glass is broken in the front, like something has crashed through. And as you step out outside into the courtyard, all of you can see just dozens of other robots their eyes that same burning blue are all in hordes destroying this whole street they are tearing through storefronts they are throwing shit at each other it looks insane and silhouette you hear it now you didn't hear it while you were in the building but you're looking around it's happening is the glass actually broken? Can I touch it? Go ahead and make a willpower check. Who? Uh, BB takes out her phone and takes a photo of the robots. Does anything show up? Make a willpower check. Oh, fuck. That's nothing. Nothing. Hmm? Nothing. No, no successes? No. You reach out to feel it and your hand goes through. Fuck. Uh, one out of one. To take a picture? What are you taking a picture of? The robots. The robots. The hordes okay. of robots destroying everything. You reach up to take a picture of the robots and you click it on. And as you're looking, a lot of them aren't there. But one is, it is this massive robotic panther-like creature in design. It has these armored plates all around it, these steel, almost dagger-like teeth, burning blue eyes. You take your phone down because it is rearing up in the photo. And just as you take it down, you see it, <sighs> but this horrible tinny roar of a robotic animal. As it is bounding toward you, I need everyone to roll initiative. Oh, and I also, I'm going to have this be where we take our break. So everyone, please uh, roll an agility check, but then add up the numbers instead of successes. Um, and then with BB's quick draw power, how does that add onto it? Um, you have a you have a skill point in it. Yeah. Um, you just re-roll as many failures as you have skill points. Okay. Do I get a bonus for rolling all of the same number? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> no, what? not for this. That's, That's cool though. Not see. <laughs> okay. Uh, silhouette, what do you got? I got 14. 14. Okay, BB? Uh, I'm still going, hold on. Uh, it's well. looking like... Wait, so do we add up the numbers of all successes? No, the whole, everything. You add up everything you rolled. Hold on, let me just... I think, okay. Uh, 10. 10. Ugh. Okay. Damn. So that makes. Mm -hmm. 
and then doing math, placing things. So yeah, first up is going to be silhouette as this thing is. <laughs> Are you still invisible? You Are you go, still invisible? You go invisible. I yeah. never changed out of it, so I guess so. I mean, I was just a floating head for like a minute or two, but. So you see this huge metal tiger-like creature, this big robot cat baring its teeth, jumping toward the group. What do you do? I don't fucking know. Um, <laughs> do you have any gadgets you might be able to use? For a big, giant robot, what did you say, <laughs> tiger? No. <laughs> like a, like a giant net. <laughs> I mean, it's not bigger than a real tiger. It's not, it's not a giant tiger. It's giant tigers in the sense of tigers huge. are giant. Yeah. <laughs> Tigers I just wanted to clarify things. that it's not a giant tiger. Okay. Okay, well, <laughs> I will admit I was thinking giant tiger. Um, it's not the thing at the end of Road to El Dorado. Okay, uh, you said... Fuck, how would this even work? Okay, you said that um, the, the, the building that we're in front of... Are we in front of the building now? Yeah, you're in the courtyard. Okay, you said that the the front of the building uh, was mirror-like. Yeah, you know when you see those big, yes, like financial buildings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, can the I... windows are just like mirrors. Okay, can I? Um, it's attacking. Is this mid attack? Okay, um, it, could I take out like um, some? reflective type thing because i'm assuming all my technology is like shiny ooh, yeah gadget. it's and early I, morning the sun is bright and i shine it in his eyes can i do that oh so that he can, interesting like, see us? okay yeah yeah go ahead and make a make an intelligence roll for that natasha got the pro strats yeah that's that's really good <laughs> tasha over here playing three-dimensional chess <laughs> hey uh two nice. successes out of three How many successes? Two? Okay, so as you shine this light, you see it's bounding forward. The light kind of hits it, but it adjusts its face so that it's like out of the light. It doesn't look like you you quite aimed it exactly right. Okay. Um, is that where my turn ends? Um, I would say that that's a pretty like, Actiony action. Yeah, if you want to do something smaller and simple, like saying something or trying to see something, anything um, like that. Um, man. Harem on your own deck. Yeah, I, I really don't know, except for like, f watch out! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, for the for the sake of the sake as well, the courtyard out in front of this building is uh, not unlike the one where you kind of went up the stairs to the to the monorail platform. There is a big fountain in the center. Uh, there is like paved walkways all around with little areas of grass and benches and tables all around. Here. Okay. And it is still generally bounding. It's forward. yeah, it's moving forward, but you guys have a minute. Looks mm. like you guys uh, are being quick about it. Okay, I want to sort of run wide of it. Okay, that's not true. Can I tell which direction the wind is blowing? Uh. Just like there's not really much of a breeze today. Fuck. Um, okay. Yeah, I want to run wide of it and start trailing it. So that whenever wherever whenever it gets to where it's going, I'm just like slightly behind it. Whether that be it stops to turn around to look at me or if it just okay. keeps going 
to get to them. So you're gonna go. like hold your action until it's close enough? Yes. But okay. I, I want, if it's like running this way, mm -hmm. I wanna, like coming this way, I wanna go around and start take, coming, yeah. Okay, like, yeah, you're around. full, you're able to do that. It yeah. is moving very quickly. Um, and it's, so it's like, it's it's gonna be on the group pretty soon. So you're able to kind of flank around and get behind it. Mm -hmm. um, and you're you're pretty quick yourself. So yeah. I, I, you know, maybe not as fast as a literal tiger, but you're able to, to kind of flank around. You guys see her do that. Yeah. Um, as this thing is continuing to move forward, you guys hear this, this distant sort of buzzing sound. Um, but silhouette, you are the only one who hears it. The rest of you hear this rocket sound as you guys see the flying robot sailing up overhead, its hands lit with that energy as it hucks these two orange bolts of energy down toward the group. It's lit in the worst way possible. <laughs> Uh, so it is going to shoot a bolt of energy at at Harriman. Ah, uh, beans. Um, do I roll anything for that? Uh, yeah. So you are rolling a dodge, which is Maybe. essentially your agility. So. That's two. Oh, no. I lost one. You got two. Oh, well. uh, okay, so you are going to take some damage here. Fuck. F. Five. So you take five points of damage as you're flanking around. You're actually in the perfect position to see this other robot. You make eye contact with it and you see those pale blue eyes as it rushes forward. The hands light up and this orange bolt just flashes across your body and burns a little bit, but it feels kind of like a concussive force at the moment. Mm -hmm. You Like, it hurts, but it's not fatal. Like, uh, wind knocked out, knocked out of you. Yeah, of it's it's hot. It is, it is a very hot pain, mm -hmm. and you're singed, but it's not what you expected. It's not the level of pain that you would have expected. Okay. Um, so next it is the, uh, the panther bot to go, and it is still running straight for Bailey. It's going to run forward and make a bite attack. That is, wow, no successes. So as it jumps forward, it snaps at you and you just pull back with your, is there a specific way that you would like to dodge this attack? Cause it failed uh, so miserably. I think it leaves an opportunity open. Oh geez. Uh, I think she'll just kind of do a back somersault. Okay. And kind of just land on her heart, land on her feet. Hell yeah. So you guys see, yeah, you see BB do this impressive like backward somersault as this thing snaps its jaws right uh, kind of where your shoulder would have been. You move backwards and land and it just <sighs> shakes its head. For a moment, it looks up at the flying robot and then back down at you. Am I able to take my held action now? Yeah. Um, you were calling for when it was close enough to you, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, so this, it would have been close enough to you after it made its attack. Okay, um, then I want to do that thing I do with my hair um, and try to, to incapacitate it, to take it. Okay. Um, so that, mine is off of willpower, right? Because it's a control? Yes. Okay. So I roll the three and the d12. Yes. So you roll you roll your willpower die, and you also roll the d12. Um, that's only one. That's only one. Yeah. One success. That's not, success? What, that's not yeah. what Mama likes. <laughs> um, okay. So uh, I also only rolled one <laughs> success. So I'm going to say that the tie. Well, how does that usually work? The tie goes, goes to the defender the, most of the time, right? And you, no, the tie goes to the attacker in D&D. You're right. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I think that's generally more fair. Yeah. So uh, you shake 
your hair in its general direction. Yes. And you feel the pheromones sort of wafting off of your person. And you see this machine, and it's strange. These training dummies really should not be able to be affected by this power. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a robot, it's a machine. But as you do this, there's this moment where it looks like it's about to, to pounce again. It just sort of stops confused for a moment and doesn't seem to really be able to take an action. It's just stopped in its tracks. This rings very strange to anyone who sees it. Uh, it is now Bang Bang's turn. All right, so uh, Baby Wolf done the back somersault, and as she comes out of the somersault, she has her finger guns pointed at the... Is it a panther or a lion? Uh, it's, it's, I keep saying panther. It's somewhere between a panther and a tiger. It really is kind of nondescript because it's a robotic a general, big cat. general large feline. Yeah. Mechanic. Panther, tiger, any, any word works in this scenario. Uh, panther, pantheon. <laughs> 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 That's what she wanted us to crack. This, this is her true form. Yeah. Uh, this giant mechanical panther. Uh, but so uh, Baby Wolf have seen uh, Silhouette try to do the eye thing. And so she'll look like she's aiming at the uh, feline beast's eyes. But then having seen Haramon kind of stop it and it looking confused, she'll redirect her shot at the robot that's flying through the air. Okay. Um, and she has a sharpshooter skill. Um, I can't recall what that was supposed to do. It's a one point sharpshooter. Uh, sharpshooter skill. Just we discussed looks, it a it long time ago. It just looks like a ago. skill point. Yeah, if, if, it's okay. a, if it's just a skill point that you have like one point next to, it might just be one reroll in your, in your power in your shooter. Perfect. Okay, that sounds good. All right, rolling. All right, I'll take that. Um, so then it's it's dex, right? Yeah. So you okay. roll. So you roll your uh, your dexterity with your d twelve for the shot, mm -hmm. and then tell me the number of successes. Oh, okay. So that's I missed one success. So I think it's three out of four. Okay. So three successes. Yeah, three out of four. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as you line it up and you take the shot, you, you like fire this energy. What color is the energy that comes out of your fingers? Gold. Gold. So you fire this gold bolt. It shoots up and you see with a strangely practiced grace, this flying robot that is rocketing down toward the group, sort of go into this aerial barrel roll and dodge the attack. Fuck yourself, robot. Um, you can use your secondary action to take a second shot, but I'm I'm gonna run it in a in a sort of D and D type way. So if uh -huh. you manage to hit with the second one, you only roll the D twelve for the damage. Okay. So, yeah, sounds good. All right. Uh, that's one success, dog. Oof. One success. I rolled none. So as you you kind of hold back for a moment, realign your shot, and take your shot with bang. Do it with your left hand. Uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So you so you shout out as though you were holding two. Yeah. You fire another arc. When this robot comes to the end of its roll, it doesn't have time to readjust for a second shot, and you fire straight into its stomach area and you see the shower of sparks as it's hit it sort of begins to move strangely as you do this um i'm gonna have you go ahead and make an intelligence roll for me at this okay. moment as you're you watching it move did you say d12 for damage yeah i got an 11 okay so 11 yeah that's uh, yeah and that'll be a success for the intelligence roll as well okay um out of a total of one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's a full success for you, so that's good. You're watching this robot move after you've hit it. The way that it readjusts, its center of balance seems wrong somehow. It's inconsistent. There's this moment where you watch it readjusting as it falls, as it's kind of blown out of the sky in a way. 
the way that it instinctively reaches down to clutch at its stomach, the way that it's adjusting does not line up with its center of flying gravity being its legs. So it sort of oh. like wiggles this way. That's so scary. <laughs> so what I generally learned from that is it's not flying with something on its legs. It's there That's what it seems like, but it, it looks like it is. Okay. Oh. Hmm. What do you mean, oh, I don't get it. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, I, I'm not sure that, I'm not sure that robot's like a real robot because it looks like it's flying with its legs, but its body is doing something different. Okay. Um, having used your, your action and your secondary action to attack, that's about as much words you can get out. Sure. Um, at the end of your turn, you guys suddenly see running in from all directions a solid, like, four more robots. They all look roughly identical, except for the fact that each one is so a slightly different size. And as they're running toward the group, they're kind of about to get involved in the battle. They're each uh, going to make an attack against one of you. What do you mean by a slightly different size? Uh, one is, like, one is the tallest of it, and it's like a little bit shorter than the other one. Dog, these are a thousand percent prestigious students. And That's like, what I was thinking. yeah. So they're going to run forward and uh, start to attack. So they're going to make one attack on each of you. Ah, oh, fucking A. Prestige can also make illusions too. Shit. Yeah. Shit. That's balls. what I'm saying. Okay. So versus Haramone. Uh, that oh. is only one success. Or no, that was a six, so it's two. What I roll against it? It was so fucking, uh, what I roll against it? Uh, agility. Link? Agility. Not Link. Not Porter. Echo. Oh, that's it was none. Echo. Yeah, I was thinking it might. That's none. Being in that poker phase. I can't. Okay. <laughs> this none. is actually none? us okay. being bullied. Uh <laughs> Everyone I thinks we're, we're shitty instead of cool because we've got yeah. put on Pantheon. You take three points of damage as the yeah, well. the tallest of the robots okay. runs up to you and just slugs you. Uh, it slugs you kind of right here. Okay. And it's it's a hefty punch, but it's not um, it's not robot strength. Not a robot strength punch. As I'm assuming does the it, thoughts that you were having. Does it feel organic? <laughs> The thoughts that you were just having out of character, uh -huh. were you having them in character? I, I mean, earlier she was like, that orange looks familiar. Um, so I think slowly, especially after what Bibi said, she's putting the pieces together. It, it feels wrong. Yeah. It does not feel like the strength of a metal creature. Okay. The What's second that? one is going to make an attack on Silhouette. Uh, that's one success. Go ahead and roll an agility to try and dodge. You're trying to beat one success. Oh, wait, they can't see you. They don't know where you are. So, hey! <laughs> so they, yeah, so they, they're, they're not able to attack you. Um, two second. of them are actually going to attack, uh, to attack BB. Okay. So I'm going to, so I'm going to roll a new one. Agility? Yeah. Okay. Four, that's, uh, four successes. I need to stop instinctively. Looking Please don't die. Uh, two out of three. Sorry. Three. Two out of three okay. successes. So uh, you take uh, five. You take five points of damage okay. as this thing slugs you in the stomach, and then uh, the the uh, another one of them is flanking you on the other side and is going to attempt to strike. Uh, that's only one success. All right. Hold up. Oh, nice. Uh, four out of three. Okay. Uh, so the second attack, as it arcs out at you, you're able to just sort of jump over it because this robot is particularly short. As it punches, you just like, like leap up and like kind of like, kick out with both of your legs and land back. Uh, so that is, is the, the end of, of those robots' turn. Is it wearing a top hat? Uh, going back to the top, it is Silhouette's turn. So you are invisible. You are watching all of this happen okay is the ro you said the robot that was up there that was like flying all crazy is now down here right 
Um, it hasn't reached ground yet. It kind of got blown out of the sky. It's, it's going to have to adjust a little bit, but it's still in the air. Does, can I see it? It doesn't have a bag. Does it have the bag that I Does saw earlier? Does it have earlier? the bag? Um, I was around its neck earlier. Yeah. I'm going to say that it does not at this point. Okay. Um, well, I had an idea and now I can't use it. Um, what What's like, uh, I guess, how many like robots are there now? There's just a lot. There's a lot, yeah. Okay. Um, there is there is the panther like creature robot. There's the flying robot, and there are uh, four identical robots, but of varying sizes. Where's the teatro robot? Where is it? I know. Um, you look around, and there aren't any more here mm-hmm. yet. <laughs> um brain hard um okay 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 all right 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 okay now, now ladies, ladies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. um i okay still invisible okay. i'm still invisible mm-hmm. i am invisible okay <laughs> And you can, you, you're clearly seeing this. I'm going to say any connections that you're making out of character, you can uh-huh. make in character. You're very smart. Okay. And that's generally how I'm going to run things. Things we know. You're invisible and you're very smart. Okay. Um, um, okay. I was really hoping that the, 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 uh, the flying one would like fall fall down uh but now i'm you could try to get on the lion's back the panther's back whatever feline it is it was just it was flying from like 10 stories up so it didn't quite get it got close enough in range to fire at you but it needed another turn to get down to ground level i still have that rope in my hand yeah what what's with the what's with what's happening with like the panther one right now it's just stopped dead. You you watched uh, Haramone send her like hair pheromones at it, and it stopped dead in its tracks, like it was affected by it. Which you find particularly weird because it's a robot and should not be affected by pheromones. Right. Um. I guess I'm just worried that like if these are the actual students, like we shouldn't kill them, right? Um, yeah. Generally. And I mean, it seems like it really is the actual students because of how uh, Monarch moved when she got shot. Right. Oh, fucking right. Um, I'm so sorry. Um, no, it's difficult. I have no idea what to do either. Um, okay. You could just call him on it and be like, this is Prestige's team. Call who on it? The robots. Um, they're just communicate with the robot. Um, okay, okay, okay. Um, just talking to the robot seems weird. If I would just like went up to the panther and I was like, "Hey, stop!" <laughs> or like, "Who are you?" Like, show yourself. Um, um, <laughs> I know you're lying. I know you're lying. Uh, stop it right now. Oh, okay. Okay, 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 okay. Um, you said the panther was, like, incapacitated. Yeah, it's, it's it stopped. Okay. Yeah. Um, is there any, like, control panel, like, on these robots? No. no. <laughs> Just start there's there's no, like, breaker <laughs> panel. <laughs> no. <laughs> um... Okay, but that one robot had, like, cords, like, out of its neck, right? Are you looking up to to see that? Yes. Okay. So you look up, um, and you don't see anything to that effect anymore. What the hell? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. Um. Okay. I will 
reappear. Okay. Um, and, uh, wait, so, like, no one has said anything yet about them being students. No. I, uh, is, no one is, has said anything is, to that effect. BB's near me? Is, is, where's Haramon? You guys like, are all coalition? close enough in proximity that you could yell to each other. Okay. Um, this is me yelling to BB and Haramon. Um, so I think that these are uh, prestigious students. Uh, you guys get, you guys catch that? You guys can use your reaction to reply if you want to. Oh, no, yeah, that thinking. makes, that makes a whole lot of sense. Um, I don't think we should kill them. I'm real glad I didn't shoot this one in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> um, fuck, I don't even know. Okay, what we're that's as much conversation as can happen. I gotta, yeah, I'm sorry, I gotta fine. move on. No, go um, on. Yeah, hair on. That's okay. What do you do in response to, to hearing that? So, okay. Knowing this is an illusion, is there any way for me to break the hold of it? So, if you feel fairly confident that this is an illusion, mm -hmm. I will let you make one final deliberate willpower Ooh. check. Okay. And right. I'm going to give you this game's version of advantage okay. so you can reroll failures. All of them or just yeah. one of them? Oh. Well, one on each die. Okay. What do we call advantage? Super advantage? <laughs> it can be advantage. It's fine. No, fuck. Okay, that's only one out of three. Oh. <laughs> only one out of three? Yeah. Okay. You're, you're looking around. You feel certain that you figured it out. And you can't seem to break the actual effect of what you're seeing. Mm -hmm. But you're looking around and you feel... It, it doesn't change what you feel. <sighs> It doesn't you know, change what I see or anything. Right. It doesn't change what you see, but the detail that you are seeing, the detail of what you are seeing, you've put the details together in your head. Mm -hmm. Even though you can't physically break the effect, you're not hearing metallic sounds anymore. There's a faint shimmer, and it is what it is. Okay. But I will say, you now feel perfectly confident that something external is affecting your mind. Um, so, the, so Mr. Menagerie is incapacitated. He... he I mean, I could tie him up just for fun, because Haramon has already decided that she doesn't like him. Did you respond <laughs> at all to what? No, because she was focusing on breaking it. Right. Okay. She was using her reaction to try to do that, um, or the bonus action, mm -hmm. quote unquote, whatever you want it to be. Uh, I think she's just going to sit down, take out okay. her spear, sit cross-legged, and be like... There's no point in fighting. She'll say this out loud. There's no point in fighting them if they are what we think they are. At that, when you sit down, you two have had the conversation. You didn't use your turn to attack. You communicated, and Bailey, you responded. That was in character, right? What you said. Yeah. As soon as Haramon sits down, you see the flying robot kind of readjust and then land gracefully around you. You see the other robots begin to sink into one form until there's only one robot. And the large cat robot still is, is just zoned out and standing there. You all hear this slow... <laughs> what the fuck? As you look around, it almost looks like a blanket being lifted in a way. It looks like paint melting away from an environment, but upward as the scenery floats away, revealing underneath a city that is more or less undamaged. Looking back up to the building, you're still in that direction, like looking in that direction, because mm -hmm. you circled around. 
you do see that the hole in in that room that that was real that happened <laughs> and that lines up with the readings that you took because she said those were real damage but looking around the army of robots is gone the destroyed city is gone and you look around and you do see kind of clutching her stomach a little oh. bit just sort of rubbing her stomach is monarch you see now the full form of a regular tiger as the metal just sort of peels away from its body there's this tingling in your minds this sort of asmr sen sensation that fades away once the truth is completely revealed there is no sign of teatro anywhere but you do see matroshka standing there as well she's sort of like cracking her knuckles a little bit and she's smiling she's smiling at all of you and she's clapping as well as prestige in his full glory just floats down to the center of the group and you see uh pantheon uh she flies down as well she's like fully like levitating down as well the two of them come down together he sort of rubs his goatee a little bit and he goes <laughs> not bad for a moment i thought you were going to get it that was some dumb bullshit uh silhouette uh <laughs> full-heartedly agrees with bb for the first time <laughs> pantheon she's like uh mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna have to agree. Pantheon looks you guys over and goes, really, it's dumb to communicate properly with each other, to be concerned with the limits of your power, who you may or may not be injuring, and make peace with the idea that a psychic threat is not going to ask your permission before they ruin your world. I think it's dumb to put other students in danger just for a training exercise. Prestige looks back to them and he goes, Did you all feel that you were in danger? Matroshka goes, Oh no, Prestige was watching the whole time. And uh, he just sort of arcs a brow and nods his head approvingly and he goes, I asked my students if they were willing to participate, gave them all the details, and only one declined. Uh, and you see Pantheon goes, this is an important lesson. And while there were maybe a few hangups, I'd call it lesson accomplished. Here, she takes out the satin bag and tosses it at Silhouette. Ooh. Uh, I like, like, oh, wait, can I open it? You catch it, and she goes, you earned it, all of you, but you first. Okay. You open it? Yes. Inside, you see that this is a bag of jelly beans. Jelly beans? Why? What is this? <laughs> It's a bag of jelly beans. Like Everybody candy? likes jelly beans. What are jelly beans? <laughs> what are the, uh, Up until this point, Paramount has been giving a knowing look back to Pantheon, but then like, just is like, what are those? <sighs> she puts a hand on your shoulder and she goes, my pupil. She takes her hand off, sorry. This may be the most important thing I ever teach you. <laughs> get, give her the bag. Get silhouette. Give her the bag. Okay. Okay. I like take some first, and then I give it to her. <laughs> she claps prestige on the back, and he goes, <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, "You're welcome. Pleasure to work with you again, Pantheon." She goes, <laughs> "Great job, guys. Thanks again." Do you, you want see? Me to uh, take take a look at that. Monarch. She's got No, I'm good, thank you. I it, it wasn't that hard. Um I was a nice like, shot. I that was, that was a nice uh barrel roll. 
<laughs> Thank you very much. Um, good job, everyone. Done. She like holds her <laughs> thumbs up and she's like, come on, come on. And Prestige leads that group away oh, down I'll, the street. I'll wake up Mr. Menagerie. <laughs> okay. Since I know how to wake people yeah. out of so you. Oh yeah, they don't just leave him. They, yeah. they stay, yeah. So as you wake him up, you see this, this tiger just sort of, and it looks around at the like stopped fighting. The form shifts back into Mr. Menagerie. Menagerie. He just kind of cracks his back. He goes, ah, that is a hell of a thing. You should well walk done. away. I'm going. Yeah. Later, guys. Good Fun times. <clears throat> and he moves off. Now Prestige leads the group away. You see Matroshka and uh, and Monarch both look back at you. <laughs> and they continue walking. Pantheon's kind of looking you guys over. She goes... I'm sorry that I had to lie to you. Was it really a lie? You did, I mean, it was, we didn't get any clues from you. you. That was true. I told you that you were looking for a nugget of truth. That was well, also true. All I know to be true is that I definitely would have shot Mr. Menagerie in the eye if Haramon hadn't used her powers first. And if you had, Prestige or myself would have stopped that from occurring. Unless you are honestly telling me that you believe that you couldn't have stopped us from doing just about whatever we wanted in that moment to protect the safety of our pupils. That is the lesson. Understand that you cannot guard against everything. One way or another, someone will find your weakness. Someone will bring you down. They'll seep into the cracks, hit you where it hurts. She kind of looks off for a moment. She kind of softens a little bit. The ability to work together, to rely on others, to communicate with your team, to strive for victory, even when you know that it's impossible. That's how you make things not impossible. Here endeth the lesson. <sighs> see you tomorrow. That's you see her. <clears throat> she just rockets up into the air and flies off toward campus. Oh, shit. I didn't get to ask her what I want. Fuck. <laughs> how do I know these jelly beans aren't an illusion? Oh no. <laughs> you guys, yeah. Oh, I was just saying, well, our communication was fine. I think we figured out the uh, deception as soon as it became evidently apparent. Mm -hmm. So, good on us then. I guess so, but I was hesitant. I, I I was scared, and I don't know. Maybe we need to be better friends uh, in order for me to uh, not just, like, doubt you guys. I'm sorry. I didn't well. see it as doubting. Oh, I did. Well, I think there are ways of becoming better teammates. Baby, you want to be friends with me? I didn't say that. Oh, okay. But, Looking... Uh, oh. Mm -hmm. No, we can get to know one another. <laughs> you too, Haramon. I don't, I don't know jack shit about you. And she's taking out this kind of like pocket knife and is cleaning her nails. <laughs> Haramon just sort of gets up, 
and is like, well, what do you want to do for the rest of the day? I, for one, am very, very, very hungry. <laughs> cafeteria? Sure. Good for the cafeteria. Haramon will on the DL text Porter and see if they're free. Okay. <laughs> so you guys begin to walk down these polished streets together. You look up at the sky and it's still a very bright, sunny spring morning. Silhouette, you look at your watch and you realize you guys were able to do this in just under an hour. And as you continue to walk forward, I'm gonna say that you all feel this strange sensation, this tingling in the back of your mind. And for a moment you write it off as the leftover effects of prestige's powers. No. But it's this cold feeling no. of someone watching you. Oh. And as you turn back to this corner of shadow, you see no one. You see no. nothing. Ah, that's a lie. <laughs> no one is there. No, he's there. <laughs> but as you look at this area of shadow, you do remember that if you so choose, you do have an appointment tonight. But we'll deal with oh. that next time. But ah! as you walk down the street together, having completed your first real training session together, knowing that at the very least, you've taken your first steps as a team. That is where we will call it for tonight. Yay. Thank you for joining us, everybody, on episode two. As ever, I am Ian Frost, and these are the friends who have names. Oh, the Warden Asteria. <laughs> Yay. You can find me at Warden Asteria, one word on pretty much everything. Uh, Our lighting sucks. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I'm Eric Schwann. There's probably links in the description <laughs> if you want to know more about me. Uh, and I'm Natasha. You can find me right here. <laughs> and that's probably the last time we're going to do that because it, it's probably going to get annoying after a while. So thank you for joining us. Tune in next time. And thank you all very much. Happy superheroing. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.